there's quite a few of my viewers and quite a few of the YouTube creators uh, have Facebook accounts. I've got a Facebook account, but I've also just set up uh, a Facebook page, strangely enough, called Double Boost. There's a bit more information uh, about the YouTube channel, about this channel. Um, there's a company helping us run the channel now, and they're going to set up a website. So hopefully I'll be able to put some more information on there. Anyway, if you want to look, Facebook, Double Boost, you'll find me. And I'll, I'll friend you. Is that the right face? I'll friend you. Anyway, I'm everybody's friend, me. So have a look. In the first part of tonight's video, I did see I was going to demonstrate how you can mill a slot in a piece of bar using a lathe. I'm still going to do that because you can actually you can break cut as in a lathe just as well as you can in a milling machine. Anyway, joking apart, all you do you mount the milling cutter in the lathe spindle. I'll put my collar chuck on because it's nice and close in towards the end of the spindle. And what you would normally do is you would take the tool post off and you can put an angle plate on there and you could clamp your job to the angle plate. You can put a vertical slide on there so you can move the job up and down. At the minute all I can do is move the job across like that, back and forward and control the depth of cut by using the top slide. You would lock the, lock the main carriage off and just use the top slide to control the depth of cut. So you can have an angle plate with a vise on it, an angle plate with a component clamp to it or ideally a vertical slide. Before I had a milling machine I did all my milling on a little Chinese lathe and I had a little vertical slide and it was amazing if you took your time you could get some very acceptable results. All I'm going to do for this particular job is put the tool holder on and the piece of ball I've got miraculously fits in there. So I can clamp that in there, milling cutter in there and I can do my milling operation on the end of here. And I can also use that to adjust the height to get it on centre height. Anyway the first thing I'm going to do is set the job on the centre height. I've centre drilled it so it should be easy enough to set it up just by using a tail stock centre. I'm just using a tool post because it's easy for me. I haven't got a really good slide. I have got a I'm going to put a good bolt under there and I have got a little vice that would go onto it but for this particular demonstration or this particular job this will work perfectly well enough too low just ease it up until we get it just about right which that's good there Right, that's going right in the middle of the hole so I'll know that the job is on centre height. Next thing is to make sure that it's actually square to the square to the face because I want to cut the parallel slot. All you do is simply treat it like a tool and just to make sure it's touching both sides like that. It's touching there, lock it up. So now this is now on centre height and it's running parallel to that face or at least at 90 degrees to the axis of the lathe. I think the first thing I'll do is I'll machine a flat on there and then I'll turn it over and put a keyway in. You can actually put some sort of indexing device on here. You can index this around and machine a square or a hex anything you wanted really. It's it's up your imagination how far you want to actually take using the lathe as a milling machine. Right, I'll find a suitable cutter, mount it in the collet, and we'll just put a, a flat on there first. Using the collet chucks are ideal to hold the, the milling cutter. Right, 
and set things up. As I've said with this setup, the only thing I can control is travel that way and feed that way using the compound slide. So I'm going to lock off the main carriage and just use the compound slide to put the feed on. So that's that's now locked. I've got that cutter running at a thousand RPM. Putting all the way down, which is also an indication that the job is actually square in the lid. You can put power field if you want it to. You can see we're cutting going in that way, so the job's going in, we're cutting conventional milling in the direction of rotation of the tool. Then we put a cut on, put a half a mill on, and that's a half of the foot. Okay, so that's machine is flat on there, no problem at all. I'll turn it around and we'll try to put the slot in. See how long the slot drill lasts in it. You can appreciate now how you could, you could turn it 90 degrees, 90, 90, and machine is square on it. It's actually put a, it's put a very nice finish on there, nothing the matter with that. Unfortunately I can't put a, an 8th slot in because I've got no 8th cut as left. I'm sure I've got something metric that's about the same sort of size. I've managed to find a 3 16 cutter. See how long that lasts. Once again, I'm going to lock off the main carriage and just use the compound slide to put the feed on with. I'm also going to run the lathe. It's got a two-speed motor. I'm going to run it right in the top speed. I'm going to run the 2000 RPM for this small cutter. The smaller the cutter, the faster it needs to turn. Okay, so this is going to be running the 2000 RPM. I've got a face shield on now because I don't want that cutter sharpening. And if it shatters, I don't want bits of it stuck on my face, especially my eyes. Right, that's really good now. Bring it in, it just touches. Right, it's just touching there. I put a, a half of foot on. Gently feed it in. Right, I can feel it, it doesn't like it. What I'll do, I'll reduce the cut down to point two. And that's a lighter cut, and it's taking that no problem at all. Same again, another point two. I 
that wasn't the sharpest mineral cutter in the box and the hair's doing quite a, a decent job on it and this time I'll set it up to put a slot across the end it's still on still on centre height so it's simple enough job to turn it around that way Make sure it's right on the right on the tool holder properly, which it is. And then we need to set the end of the barb square to the to the tool. There'll be some unbelie unbelievably complicated ways of setting that up square to that, but there is a simple way that works. It often appears just to think things out and use the simpler methods first. That's actually a little square that's in this week's giveaway. Right, that's good. We're going to use a carbide cutter this time just because I seem to happen to have two or three that size. Once again, I'm going to use the, the compound to put the, the depth of cut on so I'm locking up the main lathe carriage. I'm going to leave it run at the 2000 RPM. Right, I've started to take the cut and I forgot to turn the camera on so I'll turn the, turn the bar around a little bit and we'll do another one. Right, once again I'm running at 2000 RPM. Bring it in to just touch this. It's there. Point to cut on. Ideally, it should have water on it to keep it to keep it cool. So that's put quite a, a decent slot in the end of there. We'll manage the machine to flat on it, we'll put a little key in it. And that's unlimited what you can actually do on a lathe if you put enough time and effort and thought into it. And if you haven't got a milling machine, just a simple angle block is better than nothing, but a vertical slide, obviously no one here is rigid, but for model making, for small stuff, it's been used for decades and it works um remarkably well. This box of tooling arrived at work earlier this week. I was no near in it so I don't know who sent it. But who I did send it I'm very grateful. That's a big 70th UNC die nut. I know for a fact there's 70th UNC stuff on the steam wagon. This big gnarly melon cutter. These are high speed steel Thread chasers, UNF. But basically, what they are, they're nice pieces of high speed tool steel so you can grind them to make whatever you want. Make good boring parts because they're nice and long. The packet there, 
taps, most of them are imperial, they're a little bit rusty but they're still nice and sharp, they'll all clean up. Most of the stuff in the OR is very good condition. Nice remam, shorter remas. 23-30 seconds, I certainly haven't got one of them and that's brand new. I'm not going through them all, that's a thread file. Metric thread file. Made by Presto as well, England, that would be a good one. I've got a, a cheap one at work. You can really pull yourself out of the out of the shape of one of them. I'll never open them all, but you can imagine they're all it's all nice tooling. Set of 14mm taps there, real nice set. Interesting item there, M40 by 1.5 tap. The real monster. I don't think I'll use it, but I may be able to swap it for something, or I'm sure somebody will need a one one day. That's quite a UNC, that's handy because I'm using the UNC on the steam engine and I haven't got a I haven't got a spiral quarter a UNC, I have now. Four and a half TPI. Once again, I'll never use that to cut that thread, but it is a nice piece of high speed steel that can be ground to do anything you want really. As I say, there was no name on these, it just turned up. But I really do appreciate it, thanks very much. And what I do and use will be swapped or given away, it won't just be stashed in a cupboard somewhere to, to lie wasting. I think that's it, once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, a massive thank as always. For all the well wishes that are coming in uh, towards me wife there, me dad, absolutely fantastic. But well, don't forget, Facebook, Double Boost, and I'll friend you. Piss off, man.